behaviors that get reinforced get repeated. So if your dog is showing you calm behaviors, reinforce them with something so that they keep happening on their own. Hey guys, what's up? Are you trying to train your rescue dog? Are they struggling to settle into their new home? Maybe you're coming home to destruction, wet carpets, and a stressed out dog, and you just don't know where to go from here. Maybe you're even considering taking your dog back to the rescue because you're just not sure how to help them. In this video, I'm gonna share three common problems that a lot of people have with their rescue dogs and some easy ways that we can help them right now. I'm Erica Pasha with The Kind Canine. Let's get to it. you feel at least a little better to know that people who bring home rescues have a lot of the same issues as you're having right now. Rescue dogs can certainly come with their own unique challenges since they all come from a variety of different backgrounds and experiences. Since every dog tends to be a little bit different, I use a little bit of a different approach with every dog that I work with. I encourage you to look at a bunch of force-free and fear-free ways of helping your dog even after the end of this video. Let's start first with house training. This is by far the most common problem I hear about with new rescues. House training is when we teach our dogs where we would like them to take care of business. There are a lot of things that we can do to help our dogs learn this valuable skill. A lot of people think that dogs coming from the shelter who have lived in homes previously come hardwired with this skill and that's just not always true. Unfortunately, while dogs are in shelters, they're typically experiencing much higher levels of stress, and sometimes it takes months for them to get out of the shelter and be adopted. This gives them a lot of time to forget how to live in a home, and as a result, a lot of dogs regress in their house training after being newly adopted. The first step in reteaching this skill for our dog is to set them up for success. We don't wanna ask them to go long periods of time without going potty because more than likely, they will make a mistake. We want to guide them in the right direction rather than waiting for this mistake to happen. Make a schedule that you can stick to for a while. Take them out every 30 to 45 minutes, go out with them and bring some high value food with you. When they go potty, the moment their butt lifts up off the ground, give them a treat and praise heavily. But don't be so excited that you scare them. Make sure it's a positive, reinforcing experience for them. The more they get reinforced for pottying outside, the more likely it is to happen and the less supervision you'll have to provide. But what about when they make a mistake? Well, it's simple. You do better next time and take them out sooner. I like to make a house training log for this purpose. That way, I can track if my dog has a mistake and I can adjust my schedule accordingly. For example, if I notice the dog had an accident right after breakfast, I'm gonna make sure I take them out immediately after meals next time. Keeping a log also lets me see when my dog has been successful for long periods of time and it helps keep me motivated. If you're not able to supervise your dog while they're learning this skill, like maybe you have a job or you're going to school full time, it's best to set them up with a smaller environment for now. A sturdy exercise pen with a bed, some really good chew toys, some water, and then possibly a potty area would be a good place to start. I would also highly suggest hiring a reputable dog walker or a family friend that can drop by and hang out with your dog and let them out so that they can continue to have success in their house training. Share your house training plan with them too so that everybody is on the same page. If everyone is working toward the same goal, you'll see progress really quickly. Consistency matters. One last thing about house training, it's important not to punish your dog if they do go potty in the house by accident. Old advice often told us to take our dog's nose and rub it in urine or feces if they had an accident. But this doesn't do anything except make your dog very afraid of you. When we're trying to help a rescue dog, or any dog, build a loving and trusting bond with us, punishing them for a mistake, especially when it relates to a biological function, is something you should always avoid. Guide your dog toward the right choices and make sure you reinforce them along the way. Let's move on to destructive behaviors. It's important to recognize that it takes time for dogs to settle into their new home. When Eric and I first adopted Chester, we quickly realized that he had a very intense desire to chew stuff. In order to save all of our furniture, we had to fill this need in a productive way. For us, this meant puppy proofing our entire house, even though Chester wasn't actually a puppy, and then giving him lots of really great things to chew. 
If he went to choose something that maybe wasn't the best choice, we would redirect him by calling his name and gave him something appropriate to chew instead. Then we removed the first object so that he could no longer access it in the future. Over time, we had put everything that was considered a no-chew object away and out of sight, and he began gravitating toward all of the objects we had put out for him to chew instead. After some time had passed, his intense need to chew subsided, most likely as a result of him settling in, and we didn't need to continue puppy-proofing nearly as much. He still gets lots of opportunities to chew, like with his raw marrow bones, his beef cheek rolls, his Himalayan yak cheese chews. Sometimes he even gets some destructive enrichment opportunities, but he never goes for the books or the video game cases anymore. Destructive behavior is not always rooted in anxiety. Sometimes a dog just needs more to do. Sometimes your dog is just bored. If you feel like this describes your dog, check out my video on enrichment for more ideas on how to curb your dog's destructive behaviors. All right, let's talk about our last common behavior problem, settling down. I hear this a lot from new clients. I just got my new rescue dog and they won't chill out. The first few weeks with a rescue can be exhausting. Some of them will sleep for hours on all of these new comfortable surfaces and this new sense of quiet all around them quite different from the shelter. Others will go many nights without sleep and show visible signs of stress throughout the day without ever really settling down. As I mentioned in my last video, creating a calm environment is key, first and foremost. If you haven't already, I highly recommend that you watch that video in addition to this one. To create a calm environment in my home, I try to keep light white noise on most of the time. This usually includes beach waves or thunderstorms just to block out all of the scary sounds that could be outside. I also block access to all of the windows if I can. You can use blinds and curtains here, but I found window privacy film to be one of the quickest and easiest solutions. When you block a dog's visual access to outside, they're more likely to relax and settle in instead of feeling like they need to be on guard from potential threats outside. Once you give your dog several days or weeks to settle into their new environment, I would begin capturing calm behaviors. Capturing, with regards to training, means we're taking a snapshot of a naturally occurring behavior, one we didn't ask for, and then reinforcing it. For example, if my dog chooses to go to their bed and lay down, I might toss them a treat onto their bed. If they sprawl out on the floor in that frog leg position, I might toss them a treat for that. Behaviors that get reinforced get repeated. So if your dog is showing you calm behaviors, reinforce them with something so that they keep happening on their own. Something that can be helpful here is teaching your dog how to go to their bed or relax on their mat on cue. I would start teaching this process by first tossing many treats, one right after the other onto the bed to start to magnetize the dog to that space. This builds value into the bed since it's where the reinforcement is happening. Dogs tend to stay where they're getting reinforced. Then call your dog away from the bed and start walking toward it again. If your dog starts to go on to their bed in the hopes that they'll get a treat, Say yes and then reward them. This is effectively teaching them that yes, going to your bed makes good things happen. Once they are repeatedly going to their bed in this way, you can start to use the words go to bed or whatever words you would like to use before they start to go to their bed. The more you do this exercise, the more your dog will like their bed and will choose to go there on their own. To build the duration of your dog on their bed, you could sit while you're watching TV on the couch next to their bed and casually toss them a treat every few seconds. Over time, you can start to space out the treats over several seconds or a couple of minutes depending on how good your dog is at staying on their bed. This teaches them how to chill out on their bed and continues to build a strong positive association to it. There are certainly many other common behaviors that we could explore with regards to rescue dogs, but I hope this video's tips have been helpful in your training journey with yours. Congratulations on your newest family addition, and thank you for giving your dog the gift of love and stability. Every dog deserves a loving home and a family who can care for them and meet their needs. If you liked this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're new here, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for hanging out with me today and geeking out about dog behavior and how we we can best help our rescue dogs. Bye for now. <laughs>